girls and welcome back to the Springs Kids YouTube show, also known as Skies, because we've got the sky's the limit. I'm Miss Melissa and I'm really, really excited that you are joining me today. Today we are going to get to talk about God. We are going to be talking about how amazing he is and what's he like. But first, before we do that, let's look at our thankful journals. And I have mine right here. <laughs> I am so thankful that I get to spend time teaching you about God and about Jesus. I love to talk about God's goodness and about his love, and I love teaching you about that. So I am very thankful that you are joining me today and that you are watching this video and that you are getting to learn more about God. What are you thankful for? Make sure you put it in your thankful journal, and when you see me at church on Sunday, if you bring your thankful journal and show it to me, you'll get points for prizes. Okay, you know what time it is. It's time for our praise party. Are you ready to sing and dance and praise Jesus? I am. Get up on your feet and get everyone else who's home with you. Get them involved. Let's sing. Let's dance. And let's tell God how much we love him.
welcome back from Worship Boys and Girls. Did you have a good time singing and dancing? I did. Okay, are you ready to get into today's lesson? Today we are going to be talking about God. What's he like? Have you ever asked that question? What is God like? What are the things that he likes? What does God do? What does God think? What does God say? Like what kind of personality does God have? Have you ever wondered those things? Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, you can't explain everything there is to know about God in just one short video because God is so big and so amazing that there's just so much to say about him. And you know what? We will never, ever, ever fully know and understand who God is, but with our Bibles, we can have an idea. And there's a lot of things that we can learn about him. And we find those in our Bibles. God is all knowing. He's all powerful. He's mighty. He's loving. He's good. God is just. God is merciful. God is in control of everything. God is for you. That means that he's on your side. Um, there's just so many things that we can learn about God and the Bible is filled with all kinds of information about who he is, about his nature, what he cares about. We could spend an eternity trying to talk about God and still not be able to cover everything. But let's watch this video from our friend Douglas to find out some of the most important things. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And today I want to talk to you guys about what God is like. I want to talk to you about the nature of God, who God is. And this is honestly like the biggest topic ever. It's really, you know, it's big because God is big. And it's also big because it's very important. Because what you believe about God really has a huge impact on every part of your life. You know, when Satan tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden, one of the things he did was lie to her about who God is, what he wanted what God was like. And so one of the things about answering this question of what is God like is that we need to we need to pause for just a second and realize that we can't fully 100% know everything about God. He has revealed a whole lot to us, but our puny little brains cannot process all that is God. You cannot draw a line around God. You can't put God in a box. You could spend an eternity describing God and still not be done. Now, that being said, there is a bunch that we know about God, and there might be some ways that we could, you know, categorize the attributes of God. But I do want you to know that, that what I list today, the things we talk about today in this video, are just barely, barely scratching the surface of how big and amazing and wonderful and perfect God is. And, you know, honestly, people have been talking about the attributes of God, and they've been arguing about it and, and discussing it for thousands and thousands of years. For as long as there have been people, we've been talking about God and who he is. And for me, I feel like God's attributes can be put into like two categories. One category is that God is almighty. And the other one is that he is good. And I think that, you know, pretty much all of the attributes of God fit into one of those two categories. So almighty means like, well, almighty, all powerful, super duper strong. There's nothing and no one who is stronger than God. God has like every superpower you can imagine magnified by a billion and then some, right? So like nobody can beat God. Nobody can beat God in a fight. God is the only true God. God spoke into existence the entire universe. Everything that we see was made by God and he didn't even break a sweat. He is infinite. He has no beginning and no end. He's, he's totally self-sufficient. He doesn't need anyone or anything. He knows everything. He knows what has been. He knows what is. And he knows what will be. He knows absolutely everything about absolutely everything. There is no limit to what God knows. And he is glorious. Like, you can't even look right at him. Like, if you look at the sun, you know, it hurts your eyes. But God is like that times 10 billion trillion gazillion. Like too big to even count. And God never fails. God is almighty. And not only is he almighty, but he is also good. That means that he is holy. He is perfect. In God, there is only goodness. There is no evil in him at all. 
He's perfect. He never does anything wrong. He never makes a mistake. And God is just. God is fair and right. He cares about what's right and wrong. And in fact, right and wrong are judged by God's character. Without God, we can't even tell what's good and bad. It's through God that we can know what is right and wrong. And he is loving. He loves us so, so much. And God is merciful and gracious. So that even though he is just, you know, he is the ultimate judge. Because of his goodness, because of his love, he is merciful and gracious towards us. You know, that's why he sent Jesus to die for us. Because he is both perfectly just and perfectly loving. The penalty for sin is death. And we've all sinned. So God didn't just say, eh, well, your sin doesn't matter. It does matter. But because he loves us, he sent Jesus to die for us. Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. God is both merciful and just. And God never changes. God is always trustworthy. If God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. You never have to be worried that he's going to think one way one day and then think another way another day. He's never changing. And God is personal. God is so big and so powerful and so amazing and glorious, but, but in spite of all that, he still cares about you and he cares about me, even though we're just a tiny little speck compared to him. He knows every single thing about us. He knows more about us than we do, a lot more. And so I do, I think that, that the attributes of God can be kind of, you know, just whittled down to those two things, that God is almighty and that God is good. So I wanted to talk to you about what God is like, but I also wanted to talk to you about what God is not like. So, for example, God is not mean or bossy. Like, if you read the Bible, you're, you're going to find out that there are some rules that God has put in place for us. And sometimes it feels like it feels like these rules are there just so that God can ruin our fun. But the truth is these rules are there because God loves us and he knows us. He knows what's best for us. So God doesn't give us these rules because he wants to be mean or to, to keep us from having any fun. God gives us these rules because he wants us to live our lives to the fullest. And that includes saying yes to what is good and no to what is bad. Because let me tell you, God is not a fun hater. God does not hate fun. And Satan tries to lie to us and, and, and make us believe that God only likes boring, dumb things. When the truth is that God invented fun. God is far from boring. And he wants us to have fun in the best way possible. One of the other things that God is not like is that God is not too busy for you. Sometimes I feel like, you know, when we think about how big God is and, and how powerful he is that we... We feel like, like he's so big and powerful and we're so small and puny that he could never even know who we were. But the fact is that God is so powerful that he can know every single person that has ever lived and know them, know them very deeply. He knows them, who they are deep down in their hearts. God knows us even more than we know ourselves. And he loves us. God loves you. And he understands you like nobody else can. And you might say, well, yeah, you know, if God does know me, then he probably hates me. No. God loves you. Doesn't matter what you've done. God knows all your secrets. And he loves you anyways. And another thing that God is not, that is kind of a, it's kind of a weird thing that I keep hearing all over the place is it's, God is not anti-science. Even if there are scientists that are anti-God, God is not anti-science. Science is just the study of the natural world. And I really believe that God wants us to explore and have dominion over the earth. He wants us to, he wants us to discover new things. He wants us to make new medicines and new technologies and stuff like that. I think he wants us to learn about the universe that he created. So if you thought that you could either believe in science or believe in God, that's just not true. The fact is that science can't really tell us much about God because science is all about exploring and understanding the natural world. And God is supernatural. God is far above all creation. So yeah, you can believe in God and believe in science, absolutely. But never believe that science is something above God. You know, our scientific beliefs as a society are changing all the time. They're growing and, and you know, 50 years ago we believed something and then now we believe that that was really dumb of us to believe because we didn't have all the information. So science, we're trying to get more and more information, but we're, we're always changing. And God is never changing. Which leads me to my last point about what God is not, and that is that God is not whatever you want him to be, right? God is God. Who God is, is who God is. You don't get to just pick and choose your God, right? You don't say, oh, I like this part of God, but I don't like that part of God. That's not how it works. God is God. We didn't make God. God made us. There's only one true God and only one way to the Father, and that is through his Son, Jesus Christ. 
And again, all this stuff is just the tip of the gigantic infinite iceberg that is God. But we know that God is almighty and God is good. Wow, thanks Douglas. That was really interesting being able to learn more about God and knowing that if we read our Bibles, there's all the information we need is in our Bible. God has revealed himself and he's made himself known in the Bible and through his son Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Well, all right, now I have a few questions for you and I want you to discuss these questions with your family at home. So let's get to it, okay? I'm gonna read the question to you and then I want you to pause the video and discuss it with your families, okay? Question one, what are some of the things about God that weren't mentioned in the video that Douglas shared with us? And there's a lot. Pause the video and discuss that with your family. Question two, what does it mean that God is almighty? Pause the video and discuss that with your family. Okay, and question three, what does it mean that God is good? Pause the video and discuss that with your family. So we have learned a lot of important things about God, haven't we? We've learned that God is almighty. We've learned that God just speaks and things happen, right? He spoke our whole universe into existence. Isn't that amazing? And he created and made us out of the dust from the ground. Isn't that just amazing? And not just that, he breathed his own life into us. So the fact that we are alive and breathing is because God breathed us into life. Isn't that just incredible? We also learned that God is good, that God is just, that God is merciful, and that God never fails. Wow, so I hope that this makes you excited to learn more about God, and I hope that it gets you excited to open up your Bibles to learn more about Him. And now it's time for our craft. So come a little closer and I'll show you what we're going to make today. Okay, so for today's craft, we are going to make a cross and we're going to make it out of fun foam. So what you need to have is a cross shape that's made out of fun foam. And if you don't have any that are already pre-cut like this, you can take a sheet of fun foam and draw a cross on it and then cut it out with scissors. Okay, and you're also going to need some fun foam letters. I have the sticky kind on here that you just peel and stick to make it super easy. And if you don't have fun foam at home, you can do this craft with construction paper, but you will need to have a pair of scissors, you will need to have a piece of construction paper and a marker to draw the cross so you can cut it out. And then you'll, all, you'll also need to have some markers so that you can um, write the letters on the construction paper if you don't have the sticky fun foam shapes. But today I do, so that's what we're going to use. All right, so like we said, God is good. That is one of the things that we learned about today, that God is good. He is always good. Even when we are going through difficult times, it doesn't change who God is. God is good. So I want us to have that reminder that no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're struggling with, no matter what's going on around us, that God is always good. So we are going to write that on our fun foam today. And like I said, I have sticky letters. So I have my letters already here that spell out God is good. So all we have to do is just peel and stick. I'm going to peel off the paper off of the back and I'm going to stick it onto my cross. And I'm going to put this on this part right here. So I'm gonna put God is on the top part. And I need to go all the way over to the side so that it all fits on there. So I'll go like that. Put the O on. And the letter D. Peel that out and stick it on, okay. So now I have God on there. Now I'm going to put is next to that. Okay, and like I said, if you don't have fun foam at home or peel and stick shapes, you can use markers and construction paper. 
You can use any other kind of shapes or things like that that you have at home. You can decorate it. You can draw little things on it to make it pretty. It's your craft, so you can be as creative as you want to be with it. Okay, so there on the top it says God is, and now on this part here, I'm going to put the letters that spell good to help me remember that God is good all the time. All right, so I'll put that there. G, two O's. I like to use different colors to make it pretty. You could use all the same color if you want to, if you have all the same color letters, but I'm going to use multiple colors. And then the D on the end. And that is it. So there's our craft for today. Super easy, super simple. God is good. And if you don't have fun foam at home, you can do this with construction paper and then you can write the letters on there. You can use different colored markers. You could even, you know, cut out letters if you have letters that you can cut out on construction paper and glue those on, or you can just decorate it how you want. But just the reminder is that God is good all the time. So this will help us remember that and you can hang this up in your bedroom, you can put it on the refrigerator, you can stick it on the wall, you could use it even as a bookmark in a big book. <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. Stick it on the mirror in your be your bathroom so that every time you're getting ready in the morning, you have the good reminder, God is good all the time. Super easy, I hope you guys had fun making this. And now it's time for our memory verse. And today's memory verse is Psalm 147.5. And this is what it says. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Okay, are you ready to do that with motions? Here we go. Psalm 147.5. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. And that's Psalm 147.5. If you can memorize this verse and learn the motions when you see me at church on Sunday, if you can share it with me, you'll get points for prizes. Okay, now it's time for us to talk to God. Are you ready to pray with me? Dear God, Thank you for being almighty and for being so good. Help us to honor you with our life and to learn more and more about you every single day. I ask that you would watch over every single boy and girl who is joining us and every one of their family members that you would watch over us, that you would protect us, that you would keep us safe, and that you would bring us back next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, boys and girls, that's the end of Another Skies. I hope you had a great time today learning more about God and making your craft, and I will see you again next Sunday. Bye!